Welcome back to Dry Hollow Homestead. My name is Danielle and we're in the kitchen making a farmhouse cheddar. This is going to be with raw milk because that's what I have for my cow. And um, I already have all the milk. <laughs> this is six and a half gallons, very near to seven gallons of milk in this uh, cheese pot. This cheese pot can hold this much and no more. So that's what I get it to. So we've got it, um, you wanna get it to 90 degrees. I've had it up on, I don't know, close to medium heat, slowly warming this up. It takes forever to heat a big pot of milk from the fridge. So get this started early. This takes a long time. We have it now at about uh, 90 degrees. So I'm going to start, ooh, I bought something. Hold on, I got something off Amazon. It's an official, real, long, stainless steel. Look at that. Look at that, I can actually reach the bottom. It's awesome, okay. So, I'm going to stir it. Always when you are stirring, oh my gosh, I left a lot of cream on this. When you're stirring cheese, you always stir up and down. Milk, when you're stirring milk for cheese making, you stir up and down. I don't know, this might be too long. I don't know. We'll see what I think. I bought it off Amazon, I'll link it below. Always love your support. I always put the um, recipes in the description box below the video too, because um, I go by in the instructions, but I do not go by the recipe on anybody else's cheese. So this is all made to fit my home and my cow milk and hopefully it helps you out a little bit. So I feel like we are right at 90 degrees. All right, looks like we are ready for our culture. Now you can use two different things when you're doing culture. When you are ripening your farmhouse cheddar, you can use a mesophilic starter culture that's freeze dried, that's what I'm gonna do today. You can also use, once I have done that, like today, when I make this cheddar cheese, this farmhouse cheddar, I will save back some of the whey. That is called backsplash whey, and I'll show you when I do that, at what point I will pull that off. And store that in the fridge. You can even freeze it if you would like. Um, it stays good for a long time in the freezer, too. And you can use that to start cheese. If I were to use backsplash whey for this amount of, tea, of milk, um, this was six and a half gallons, I would do one cup of backsplash whey to ripen this entire thing. But I'm not using that today. I'm using mesophilic culture that I buy off Amazon uh, through New England Cheese Making Culture. New England Cheese Making Company? Whatever. So I will show you what how I start it. And I also link that below, my cheese pot, anything that I think that you might need in order to make this, you might not already have, rent it and this mesophilic culture I will link in the description box below this video. Um, always, always help me if you can <laughs> because that that is the way this channel keeps making content is from your support. So let me go grab the freeze dried culture is actually in my freezer. Okay, so this is what it looks like when you order off Amazon or wherever. Um, New England Cheese Making Supply Company. It comes in a mesophilic culture, it says there. It's got directions on it. I try to go by the directions. I'll tell you exactly how much. Okay, so you get out one pack. We're gonna use one pack. This says that one packet will make four gallons of farm fresh milk. I'm actually going to use the whole gallon, or the whole packet for six and a half gallons. Um, I'm not really sure how much is in there. It's probably about a teaspoon, I would guess, altogether. So definitely save your way when I sh tell you to save it, do what I tell you, because man, that will save you so much money. So you sprinkle this on the surface of your milk. This is called ripening um, your cheese. And this is actually introducing this bacteria, this culture, and you will let this rehydrate on the surface for two minutes and then we will stir it in an up-down fashion to incorporate it in throughout our whole pot of milk. Now, I do need to move my sourdough bagels because this sourdough should not mix with this cheese culture. So 
So then I'm going to store this back in my freezer and um, I definitely have had great success with this. I have also heard that heard in the grape through the grapevine. I have seen other cheesemakers use buttermilk as their mesophilic culture and I make homemade buttermilk, cultured buttermilk, and I have done that with cheese. I've used it as a mesophilic culture and I'm not thrilled with what it looks like, what it smells like. I haven't tasted it yet, but if that works, that would be awesome. And I will get back to you and let you know that if I think that's a great option, but I really need it to be great cheeses. If I'm going to spend my time in my kitchen and all this milk, which is valuable to me, and I hand milk, so each and every squirt has been squirted by me. <laughs> it's a lot of work. So I'm gonna let this rehydrate, then we're gonna stir in an up-down fashion. Um, cheddar cheese is awesome because you can skim the very top of your milk, cream off of your milk and save that. Uh, but you do want it to be um, not totally skimmed. You do not want to use skimmed milk. Uh, you do want to have a small amount of fat for sure. The fattier the milk, the, um, the texture of your cheese will have a different taste to it. It'll be more of a creamier cheese. Now, ch cheddar is awesome because you can eat it as cheese curds. You can eat it right after it's been pressed. That's called a green cheese. You can eat it a month after you've pressed it. You can eat it two years after you've pressed it. That's the best part of cheddar. Um, it just, it gets better with age, but you can eat it at any point and it tastes pretty great. So that's already been two minutes. Wow, I can really talk. So let's mix with our brand new Maiden Voyage spoon in an up-down fashion. And we are going to not splash. For some reason, all the cheese making books tell you not to splash. I'm not sure what that does. But it does make sense to go up and down like this because you want to stir it in completely. And cream rises to the top very quickly in um, non-homogenized milk, which this is straight from the teat milk that's not been heated up until this point. So I will definitely let you know if that buttermilk works as a mesophilic culture. I've even heard of people using their kefir, which I do milk kefir, and I still haven't done a video on it. I need to do that, but uh, we make milk kefir into smoothies daily. That's usually something I have a couple of daily for probiotics, prebiotics, all kinds of great things. Okay, that looks good. Okay, so we are actually going to put the lid on this and we're going to allow this to ripen. Sometimes that's called you culture or ripen for 45 minutes. Always set a timer. I usually use my watch or my stove, but my watch is with me all the time. So that actually travels. I don't have to stay near my stove. 45 minutes and then we will come back. And that's when we are going to add our diluted rennet. Timer has gone off and we are now going to add our rennet. You always dilute rennet into a, um, a quarter cup of water, no matter how much rennet you use, you put it in a quarter cup. I always measure in my um, pint jars because they have measuring on the side. So we're going to cover, we're going to put this on the, we are going to sprinkle this over the surface of our milk. And then we are going to mix in, just like we do anytime, up and down motion when we're stirring. So, I always suggest that you use chlorine-free water. So if you live in city and you have chlorine that is added to your water, you can distill it yourself by um, just setting it out overnight. I think that is a, a viable choice. Or uh, I have a Berkey filter that is a black carbon filter. You never want to put chlorine in any kind of culture. Your sourdough you don't, or um, kefir or kombucha or your milk, your uh, mesophilic cultures or your cheese cultures for your milk. 
that will actually kill that bacteria. That's the whole point of your um, bleach in your water. And I don't really, I mean chlorine, not bleach. I really don't wanna drink chlorine. So I really suggest, I have a Berkey water filter. If you're interested, um, you can leave a comment below. I'm sure they have some kind of kickback program I'd love to be a part of, but I really do love my Berkey. So that heat has been off since before we put in our culture. As soon as I got it to 90 degrees, I turned that heat off. I always cover it whenever I have a long period of time that it's gonna be setting. Like now, we're gonna let this coagulate. Now, let's see, I'm gonna follow the directions on this amount. Um, hmm. Another 45 minutes. And then we're gonna check for a clean break. Uh, at 45 minutes, we'll come back and we'll stick a very clean finger in and see if it breaks cleanly over our finger. If not, we'll add more time. Okay, the timer is going off. This has coagulated. My kitchen might be a little bit loud because we live here. <laughs> Five kids and we homeschool and people are doing homeschool behind me. So a clean finger, we're gonna check for a clean break. Stick it in, pull it up. Looks pretty clean to me. The next stage, the next stage of this process is to um, cut our curds. We are going to cut them into half inch cubes. Um, jelly at the very beginning, so definitely stir very gently when we begin. At this point, we are going to stir for 30 minutes, bringing the temperature up to 100 degrees. Uh, they say to take, um, raise it two degrees every five minutes, just slowly. Take the whole 30 minutes, gradually warm it up to 100 degrees, and stir constantly. I go ahead and do uh, with a spoon at first because you don't want to mush them. You have to be gentle with the curds, and they will gradually shrink down. Um, and this is at the very end of the 30 minutes. This is what it looks like when we are about to uh, turn that timer off and start the next step. Is to uh, turn this timer off. Actually, set another timer for one for five minutes. We're gonna set a timer for five minutes and allow these curds to settle to the bottom. Mm -hmm. So they will go to the bottom. This is when you could go ahead and pull some of this this whey off. Mm -hmm. Take a quart of this whey and stick it in your fridge so that you can make uh, mesophilic cheese with this backsplash whey. So do that right now. I'm going to shut this thing up and wash mm -hmm. my arm. My whole arm. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is how simple this process is. I have a clean mason jar quart size. I'm going to let it sink down, grab a, ga a quart. I'm going to put a lid on it, label it with mesoculture, and stick it in my fridge. Saved yourself. 20 bucks right there. Okay. So the timer went off, and I'm ladling off a lot of the whey that was, you know, at the very top. I went ahead and ladled it off into a five gallon bucket that I'm gonna take out to my uh, garden and pour on top. You can also put that into uh, another stock pot, stainless steel pot, and do ricotta. I am not going to do that. I don't do it very often. I know I should, but by the time I'm done with this, I'm ready to get out of the kitchen because I've got so much to do. So at this point, I am sanitizing. What I'm doing now is, uh, let me see scan you over my dirty dishes <laughs> and my half-eaten bagel. I am boiling water in my kettle <clears throat> to pour onto my cheesecloth that is lining a colander. That is how I'm going to sanitize it. I'm going to then um, dump my curds into that. So you could do that, you could do that over top of a stock pot so that you could catch the rest of that way. Like I said, I don't, I don't really worry about it. I know a lot of people love ricotta. Um, not there yet. One day I'll start making or doing all of my way into ricotta, but I'm not doing that right now. I don't know why, I'm sorry. Unacceptable, I guess. So that's what I'm doing okay. now. 
I'm going to go ahead and I don't know. Why I'm, gonna do this. I'm gonna put this back in. See, can you see my head and my headless? That's okay. It's close to Halloween. So I'm going to splash way all over myself. Slowly pour this in. I'm pretty sure that we did this together um, a few weeks ago, and I fit it all in my big colander. I'm not sure. I'm not 100 percent sure we did that. But with that cloth like the colander, we are going to tie up and we are going to actually hang these curds to drain. Here it comes. Okay. Sorry. Hope that didn't break his fingers. Oh, Lordy. Okay, it worked. Yay! All right, I knew it did. I never doubted for a second. Now you tie whenever I have a cheesecloth that I'm going to tie up to to um, drain. I tie um, corners, cut a corner to one another. Sometimes once, sometimes twice. It looks like it needs. It seems like a lot of curd. Okay. Can I just get myself. This, these are, this is a shortcut way to make a cheddar. There is um, a longer version I have on my channel. It's a traditional cheddar. Uh, you are welcome to I click on that. I'll actually head. link it. You can see my head. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> I will link it in the description box um, below this video. So I need to grab a bowl and I am going to strain nice it, hang That's this it. bag of curds. But you want to have a bowl so that you do not leak all over your kitchen. So, now, let me see if I can show you where I'm going to hang it. See that little hook right there? And you can see out my window. Isn't that nice? Okay. <laughs> and my half eaten bagel. So, I'm bringing this over. And we are going to hang it. Whoa. Very gingerly. I'm gonna hang it for an hour. This is in place of cutting the curds and steaming them. It has a mass on top of a stove, like on a traditional cheddar. This is in place of that. So we're gonna let that strain like this for one hour and then we come back. I'm gonna butter on my nose. Okay, while that is straining out for an hour, go ahead and get your press started, get it ready. Um, I always run hot boiling water through my press before I put my um, curd mass in it. So that's what I'm gonna do. We, and our next step will be to get this mass out and then we are going to salt it. And then we're gonna press it. So we will be back soon. That timer is going off means our bag of curds has been draining, straining, dripping, draining for an hour. <clears throat> so we are actually going to dump them into a bowl. I shut that thing off. And we're going to, uh, the directions say to break it up into walnut size curds. <sighs> Walnuts are this big, they're that big. And then if you get walnut pieces, they like this big. So I don't know, we're just gonna break them up and add salt. I'm gonna add three tablespoons of salt to this. Well, I am editing that farmhouse video, that farmhouse cheese making video, and I lost another segment. Um, I don't know. I'm, I do this on my phone, so it's a little sketchy at times. <laughs> it's not a new phone. <laughs> it's like um, a Samsung S9, so it's not brand new. So let me just tell you what I did before I move on to the next clip. I we let that hang for one hour, then we take it out, put it in a bowl, and we break it up into walnut sized pieces, whatever that means. I just make it into smaller pieces, about that big. And then we added three tablespoons of sea salt and I mixed that together. And then we put it in our press and we pressed it for 30 minutes on medium pressure, I believe that was. And then this is what was next. It has been the 30 minutes. It is time for us to go ahead and flip this thing. You'll get this flipped. Some 
um, cheese recipes I'll tell you to get a new cheesecloth when you do this. I'm really not sure why they do and I never listen when they say that. Um, I just don't feel like it's going to make that much of a difference Oops. Um, for 30 minutes. Like, yeah. Okay, so I had some curds that were laying on top that didn't get pressed. It's fine. They're falling off. Okay. It's starting to knit together very well. So my next thing will be to flip it and reverse it. Oh, no. <laughs> flip it, reverse it. Uh, 30 minutes, 30 minutes was the first time. We are going to do now overnight. So that's, I don't know, what time is it now? It's 4.30 now. When I wake up tomorrow and I think about it, I will take it out of the press and we'll see what it looks like then. It smells delicious. And you know what? I think I might actually eat this as a green cheese this time. Um, someone was asking on Facebook on the cheese making Cheese makers board, I don't know, I forget what it's called. Someone was asking what a really good um, cheese that you press and make and you can eat uh, fresh that also melts. I'm assuming that it would melt just fine. I'm pretty sure it would melt just fine, but I want to know. So, I mean, cheddar, once it's aged it, I just usually don't make green cheese. I, I don't eat it as fresh cheese. I usually age it and I do know that melts wonderfully um, but I would assume that would too but I don't want to tell anybody that it would and then it not so <laughs> I don't know why it wouldn't though it definitely would I don't know what I'm saying so we're pressing this overnight on um, off again we're going to do firm pressure um, I don't know So when we come back tomorrow, we will set it out on the counter and air dry before we vacuum seal it to age it. Unless I don't age it and I eat it fresh. We will see. You will know before I do. <laughs> uh, my daughter's listening to ABC song. Okay, see you in the morning. It's the next day, and the next morning I'm gonna take this cheese out of the press and begin air drying. We'll see what it looks like. I usually have a very crooked press. It has to be real special to get it crooked every single time, like I do. Yours might be different. And you just want to make as much noise as possible because it's almost 8 o'clock and some people are still in bed. Yeah. Looks beautiful. This cheesecloth, you need to rinse in the sink before you put it in your laundry or it'll never get that cheese smell out. Okay, it's not that crooked, just a little. I'm going to set it on an upside down plate and cover for several days. Let this air dry. Then we'll vacuum seal it if we don't eat it right away not sure yet thank you so much for coming by and making farmhouse cheddar with me in my kitchen um i hope i encourage you that your kitchen does not have to be perfect in order to make great food my, i watch youtubers that have these huge white kitchens and it looks like no one has ever lived in their kitchen um you won't find that here <laughs> not even it's okay. I'm just cracking up. I need to, I need to put the camera down. So I was saying we did eat that farmhouse cheddar as a fresh cheese, as a green cheese. It did not age it. I let it sit on the counter um, for two or three days and we cut it up and shredded it and it's, it uh, melts just fine. I don't even know why I thought once about it. Of course it'll melt fine. <laughs> All my cheeses I've ever made melt except halloumi, which I've never made a video on. So, okay. Um, God bless you. I speak Jesus over you and I will see you back here again. Subscribe, like,
the comment. Yeah, talk to me in the comments below. Um, I really love to hear what's going on in your kitchen. Bye.